Hi everyone, in this video we're going to discuss the relevance of DSA in today's date for cracking interviews. Whether you go for placements, whether you go for internships, you might be wondering, is DSA important? Is DSA still relevant? Should you do DSA or not? And you might have a lot of such confusions, especially now that you have so many videos that are saying that DSA is not important, no company will ask DSA in the future, etc, etc. So in this video, I'm going to answer all of your questions and clear all of your doubts about DSA. So let's get into it. So the first thing is DSA not important or has the relevance of DSA gone down in the recent days? So yes, that is absolutely true. And I'll tell you from my own personal experience as well. So you might have noticed I have this playlist, which is called interview experience playlist on my channel in which I gather and I invite a lot of people to share the interview experiences. And I've been doing this for around three years now. And I've noticed that the recent interview experiences don't have that level of DSA as it was a couple of years back. So you have to admit the amount of DSA that companies used to ask two years back has definitely gone down in the recent few years. So the focus on DSA has definitely gone down and DSA is not the main priority for a lot of companies, especially if you go for startups and I mean high paying startups, you know, good startups, which pay you a lot, which have good work culture, which have good funding. They don't ask that much DSA. So the focus on DSA is definitely shifting. Even if it's a little bit, it is definitely shifting and going down. So if the focus is not on DSA, then what else is there or what else is the focus shifting to? So that thing is called design. So by design, what do I mean by design? For freshers, I specifically mean LLD and database design. What happened a couple of years back, nobody expected freshers to know design. People got placed on the basis of DSA alone. If you knew DSA, everyone would welcome you. Every company would have a place for you, right? Nobody expected that you know system design, but that's not the case anymore. Right now you have many companies which have dedicated rounds, even for freshers about LLD, about, you know, making systems where you have different classes, you have to define each class, you have to define the relations, you have to define the functionalities. You have database design, which is very important. If you're applying for a backend role, you have like the designing of database, you have which database to introduce in your system. What is the ER diagrams or has the relation between the database? So these things have come up recently and have become very important. If you want to get a high paying job in one of the startups or MNCs. So a lot of companies have introduced these LLD round or machine coding round basically. So as you might have already seen, DSA alone is not enough for you to get place in your dream company. You need DSA, but along with that, you need a lot of things. You need to be good in development. You need to have some good projects in your resume. You need to have a good resume. You need interview focus skills. So you need all of these things if you want to enter the software domain in the top companies. And it gets difficult if you want to do all of this alone. And if you are someone who wants a guided approach, if you are someone who wants a structured curriculum to learn all of these things, then Cryo is here to help you out. Now, what is Cryo? Cryo is an upskilling platform which teaches you everything that you need to become a software engineer. So it teaches you DSA, it teaches you development with the latest tech stacks, it teaches you interview focus skills, it shows you how you can make a good resume, basically everything that you need to crack the top companies. And along with all of these things, Cryo also has a great placement record where the average package is 11 LPA and average super dream package is 22 LPA. So I've given link in the description. You can check the entire course out. You can see the curriculum for yourselves and you can even take it if you want. So you can go click the link in the description and check it out. And let's get back to the video. So what should you do about DSA? Should you skip on DSA or should you just leave DSA? And I recently found a comment which I found hilarious. So there was a video which was saying that DSA is not important. And there was a comment in the video which said that when I start DSA, start a video video. So I feel a lot of these videos like, you know, demotivate people and they don't start DSA because of such videos. So let me be very, very clear to you. DSA is still very important and not just for cracking interviews. You will be using data structures and algorithm in your day to day life, in your day to day work in the industry once you join in the company at least the basic data structures so dsa is very important and you should still learn dsa okay so let's categorize the companies in three types okay first you have the fang companies you have amazon google zeta these kind of companies they do require a high level of dsa 
And if you have competitive programming on your site, well and good. You'll notice that in Google, the majority of people who crack Google are competitive programmers. Not all of them, but majority of them are. So in companies like Google, Zeta, all these kind of companies, Amazon, you absolutely need DSA for fan companies. Then you have startups. So you have high paying startups, you have remote opportunities, you have these kind of companies. Here you also need DSA, the MNCs. Here you also need DSA, but you need up to medium level of DSA. So if you're able to solve lead code medium, well and good. You'll be able to crack all of these companies. And then the next, you have service based company. Here also you need DSA, but very minimal. If you're able to solve easy medium problems, if you're able to solve basic data structures, you will be able to pass. So these are the three categories right now and the amount of DSA that they're asking according to their roles. Next thing comes system design. What should you do about system design? So what I will suggest to you is you do things in parallel. You learn DSA, but you don't skip system design. If you're doing system design, don't skip DSA. DSA is a continuous process. Once you start, I don't think you should ever stop it. Even in job, you can do DSA. You can give contests, you can solve a few problems once in a while. So DSA is a continuous process. So what I'll suggest, you go on lead code, start solving problems. You can take any sheet, you can take Strive sheet, something that I will definitely suggest, and you can just start solving problems, okay? So DSA is all about problem solving. Just keep on learning, keep on solving problems. DSA is sorted. At least you should be able to solve lead code medium. Then coming to system design. Now, if you're a fresher, system design might seem a little bit intimidating because it is completely new to you. You weren't taught this in college. DSA, you still might have some idea. System design is completely new for you. So what should you do? First, choose a good language, okay? Choose a good object-oriented language. If you ask my personal suggestion, I will suggest Java. I know people choose C++ with Java, but for design, I will not recommend C++ as it becomes very complex. Java or JavaScript is a much, much better choice for design. So what can you do for design? There are some very good resources for learning design. So there's this channel called Ashish Talks, which has Ashish as the host. And he has made an entire video about the system design resources that he has used. I'll give a link to his videos. You can watch that as well. But generally, the one channel that I will suggest for Java is Riddhi Datta. He has some great videos for Java. And if you want to start with LLD, then there's this channel called Concept and Coding from Shreyans Jan. That is also pretty good for LLD. So design, you can learn by watching YouTube videos, by doing implementation on your own, and by having good skills in a particular object-oriented language. If you do these three things, if you're good with these three things, along with that, you have database. So you should be good with SQL, you should be good with CS Fundamental, you should be good with DBMS. If you do all of this along with DSA, then that's pretty much it. Every company will be there for you. So to sum it up, what you should do, choose any programming language. I suggest an object-oriented programming language. Start doing lead code, start solving lead code problems in the same language because lead code or DSA is nothing but problem solving more or less. Start solving problems, you will eventually get better with it with practice. Then you can learn object-oriented programming. You can go deep into object-oriented programming. How does it work? What are the fundamental features? What are the theoretical parts? Everything about OOP. Once you do that, start learning LLD, start learning design. How does design work? Like I said, Concept and Coding has a great playlist. All of the resources I'll mention in the description. You can take it from there. After you do LLD, then the remaining thing is CS Fundamentals because you have database design as well. So for that, you need to be good with DBMS. You need to be good with databases. How does databases work? How does SQL work? How are the relations between the databases? How do you design complex databases? Things like that. And then you have computer networks, few most CS fundamental topics. So do these three things, these three or four things, then definitely any good company you will be able to crack, okay? And don't skip on DSA. Don't watch all of these videos and think that DSA is not at all important. It is important, especially for fan companies. But for other companies also, they will ask DSA. Even if it is minimal or even if it is just medium, not hard, it is still important. And along with that, design is also important. Don't skip on design as well. So do all of these three things, follow the resources I've mentioned, and you will be on a good path. So that's pretty much it. If you have any doubts, then feel free to leave it in the comments. Or you can message me on Instagram, whatever works for you. So that's pretty much it. Thank you.